If it's a good tree, he should be able to get a tune from it straight away. Really? And there it is, that unmistakable sound. Yeah, but this isn't one of them. <laughs> new day, new adventure, heading out to Arnhem Land, heading up to Gove, up at Nullumboy. Bit of fog around this morning, it's going to be a nice fine day. Looking forward to this one, I've never been into Arnhem Land before. But you know these guys, they're easily distracted. Sort of wild buffalo that year somewhere. Look at him go, he's out of here. Jason, this is come on. The first wild buffalo I've ever seen. Oh, look at him go, oh, he's hitting the scrub on me. There's heaps of them. Oh, there's the big bull. Big bull with his hair on. Look at the horns on him. Oh, no. Oh, I've just done a tire. Oh. Friggin' buffalo. Time for a tyre change. Simon's got some explaining to do. It wasn't the tyre's fault, it was my fault. I drove over a big timber stake. Nothing against the tyres, the tyres are tough as nails. Here he is, finally caught up to him. Good chat to him. Here you got a copy, mate. Yeah, mate, what happened? Where were you? Well, I've got a funny little story. I don't know how funny you'll think it is. All oh, right, tell us your funny little story. We've been waiting for an hour. I uh, saw me first buffalo back there on the side of the road ages ago. Did you see them? Yeah, um, they're Bintang. Yeah, well, I thought I'd go and chase them through the bush in the car. You know, never seen them like that before. Ran right over about an eight-inch timber stake, mate. And tore the side out of me, tell that. Now there's a lesson in there, isn't there? You think I might have learnt it? Don't chase the buffalo. G'day guys, this video is brought to you by Campos 4x4's Boss Air Tire Deflators, mate. This is Australia's number one tire deflator, without a doubt. It's so easy, I can't believe how easy it is. You grab them out, you make the setting on here to which whatever pressure you want to drop your tyre to. Lock her in, whack her on here. Like that, and away it goes. Deflates all four tyres at once. I reckon by the time you get back around to the front, she'll be almost ready to go, and you're off on the tracks. Anyway, if you want to check them out, so you go over to Campos 4x4's web store. They're available on there. Otherwise, have a look at the list. There could be a dealer around the corner from you guys. Anyway, that's enough mucking around. Let's get back to the video and back to the adventure. Jason Simon's trip across the top of Australia has brought them to Arnhem Land, where the traditional owners are showing them how they make didgeridoos. Right, let's have a look. We're wandering through the bush here with Patrick. He's up there somewhere, and we're looking for what they call yadaki. Now, yadaki, which is originated from this area in East Arnhem. And what it is, it's the didgeridoo tree. And it's a stringy bark tree we're looking for, and we're looking for a tree that has been hollowed out from the inside. So it's a green tree, and the termites hollow the guts out. And that's what creates the didgeridoo, is the termites eating it out. So what Pat's doing is he's, uh, he's cut it down, cut the bark off, and he's cut back to the main timber of the tree, and he's flicking it, flicking it with his, with his finger like that, and he can actually hear to see whether it's hollow, and then he'll check further up to see whether it's hollow up there. Pat says this is a good one, so we cut it down with an ax. Pat checks to see how far the hollow section goes. Huh? 
You better make some sort of noise out of it. Out of here somewhere. So what we do, we go to the end of the hole. Yeah. And then we work our way down till we find the right size. Oh, okay. For your mouth. Mm. Yeah. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to find the best opening. But he doesn't want to get too far down the ditch because it gets shorter and shorter. So we're just checking for the best hole for your mouth. You need to bring a big auger bit. If it's a good tree, he should be able to get a tune from it straight away. Really? And there it is, that unmistakable sound. Yeah, but this isn't one of them. <laughs> Show me what you do with your mouth. No, 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 you got it too little. Tighten it a little bit. So this, this is what the termites have hollowed out of the guts of it. And Pat was saying that this has been there for a long time because there's a lot of this, I suppose, debris left from the termites. He's also telling me that they use this in the fire. They put it in the fire to keep the mosquitoes away. Thousand and one uses for a tree around here. That's like something's dying. <laughs> this one's no good. It's a lot of hard work to get the ditch right. <laughs> <laughs> You know, even just, just looking for that, the didge tree or the uh, didaki, that they call it, that tree itself is not only produces a didgeridoo, which is a musical instrument, the bark off it is used to, for fire lighting. The centre that the termites have chewed up is used to, to, uh, to eradicate insects or mosquitoes in the fire. And just here, right beside me, is a, what they call a a cabbage palm, and that there is an edible plant. And, and that's the beauty of this country. It's, it's so rich in, in, in this vegetation and nature and, and everything has a use. And that's why it's so important to hold on to that and make sure that it doesn't get lost. Good job in conserving that tree there, brother. We've got to look after the bush, eh, Joe? Hey, it's got a thousand and one uses. <laughs> and it's the centre of that is what's edible. Now, it's a very starchy. Doesn't have a lot of flavour. Look what he's done here. We'll look after the Australian bush, look. He's killed it, what? A mouthful of the poor little tree. Hey, that tree's <laughs> not dead yet. It'll come back, eh? Come back stronger and bigger than ever. It will. Meanwhile, I've found my Yadaki. This one looks like we'll give her a go. She needs a bit of work. But she it's hollow at both ends. So we'll cut this one down, back down to the bottom of the hill, eh? We strip off the bark to reveal the smooth trunk. Well, that there is a yadaki, or a didgeridoo, as they call it in East Arnhem. It's where they originated. And this one's got a bit of character about it, too. Nice bit of shape. All we got to do now is work that with a heavy file, a rasp, and get it, bring it back to the red, the red centre of this um, timber. It's got a real red colour through the centre of it. And then 
clean up this end, which is the mouthpiece, and we might be able to blow a tune out of it. Not me. <laughs> I can't play a didgeridoo. There's only one person here who can play, but he's being modest and letting us have a crack. All right, let's get back to camp. The day's over. We got a didgeridoo from the bush at East Arnhem Land, where the didgeridoo was invented by the indigenous, indigenous folk of this country. From the two clans. In two clans, yeah? yeah? There you go. Before we head back, we come across a visitor. Hey. Now this guy here, he's one of my favourite all-time lizards. And he's the frill neck lizard. And this, this is a big male, this guy. And this is probably one of the biggest ones I've ever caught. And I can't believe that he was just sitting there, because normally they hightail it for the trees, because they are extreme tree climbers. But look at that frill. Look at the coloration in the bottom of that thrill. Uh, you are a pretty thing. Look at you. It's sort of, you know, sort of nearly dark soon. I think this guy here, and he feels really cold. And maybe that's why he's got no real go in him. Because he would have been sitting there going, man, I've just run out of sunlight. Because <laughs> he uses the sun, because he's a cold-blooded reptile. He uses the sun and he gets the frill out. And that also acts like a big solar panel. I think he may not, he may not want to sit up and dance for us today, but let's see what he does. Now that frill neck lizard is Patrick's totem for his homeland. And he is a significant part of his cultural cultural uh, upbringing. They're such a beautiful creature, those frill neck lizards. I really enjoy spending a bit of time in the bush with those things. There you go, buddy. Let's spend the, the night up the tree, and then when the sun comes back out, he'll come down, get his solar panel out, and start recharging the batteries. Introducing the home of Australian adventure, Unleashed TV. A growing library of content featuring the best of four-wheel driving, <laughs> fishing, touring, rebuilds, bush cooking, and whatever you call this. Hope the airbags take up. Stream entire seasons of the hit TV show, All For Adventure. Get me out of here, boys. Water's coming in. Unleashed. Oh, that's and more original series from Jason and the team. In this mini series, we're going to be exploring some of the most remote coastlines. Plus, get fresh new content exclusive to Unleashed TV subscribers. Snappers, mate, this is all going on down here. You it? can stream it all for just $9.99 per month. Yeah. That's why Unleashed TV oh, yeah. is the home of Australian adventure. Not washing it. He got it. He smoked it. Oh yeah!